Hi everyone, David Maley here, and I'm back today with the uh, part three in the series for developing a highly accurate ARIMA forecast in R. This is a great process for you to have if you're in data science, data analysis, and it shows that you really know your stuff because you're taking not just regular forecasts, but you're doing a process with a bunch of testing involved in it that proves that you have high accuracy in your forecast in the end and it shows along the way that you really know what you're doing. If you can show someone this in data science you will impress pretty much any data scientist and definitely any data analyst. So this is part three. So today what we're going to do is we're going to cover autocorrelations and choosing the model order. Now in the previous two series, if you haven't watched those yet, please go back and watch them. We already did the exploratory data analysis in part one. In part two, we decompose the data, which is removing seasonality, uh, trending, and things like that. So in this one, what we're doing again is the autocorrelation. So this is basically, this is what we left off with last time. We decomposed our data, and that's what this graph is here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into some other stuff here. And let me show you this. Let's open this up here. There we go. So you see here we're going to create an ACF plot and a PACF plot. And remember I told you in the previous videos that there was something about lag, right? So when we did the uh, Dickie Fuller test, there was a third or a second component in the middle which said lag equals seven, right? So what we want to do is we want to run, this is ACF and this is PACF. And you can see right here it tells you exactly that basically what we're doing is we're displaying the correlation between a series and its lags. And the second one is uh, that includes previous lags. So you'll see them in these graphs. So these are two graphs that we're going to do here. So let's do this one first. Let's hit this and hit control and enter. This is our studio, so it's really easy to work with. And let's bring this graph back so we see what we're looking at. So remember, this is the ACF one. So when we look at this, we have an upper and a lower bound, and we want our data between this. Uh, we got a little bit that comes out here, but we got a whole lot that comes out here, right? And if we look at this, here's 30, here's 60, and as we go down, this is probably about 15 right here, and you're probably looking at about 7 to 8 right in here where this begins. And uh, then if we do the PACF, which is the same thing, so basically this is, remember these are two functions, ACF and PACF, and the count MA was from the previous one, our 7 uh, day or weekly moving average, right? So let's do this one, again, control and enter. Give it a second, there we go. And see how it changed a little bit? Now this has 0, 30, and 60, and here's our lines, but look, it goes from here, down, 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 and then there's one here. So we know we probably have some of these that we need to remove. So what we need to do next is let's go back to this. We've got our ACF and our PACF, and I'll get back to those in a second. So now what we want to do is we want to look at the difference. So a difference is when we deseasonalize things, we can go and use a difference which brings our data closer together. Uh, it's a better way to say it maybe. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and say we've got a count D1 equals our difference of, difference of the deseasonal count which we created back. Remember when I showed you we created this? That was that one piece where I said we were going to come back to this. That's what we needed right here. And then you got difference equals 1 and we're going to plot it. Now watch what happens when I do this. It may not make sense quite yet, but let's show you, okay? Do you remember how our data looked before? See, it looks kind of the same, but it's a little bit better. A difference brings the data points closer together. Now watch this. We got negative 0.1 to negative, or to positive 0.15. Now what if I made this a uh, difference of 2 or 3, right? Now watch what happens. Remember the data I just showed you? See how it comes closer together? You can just see how it just did that. And it, this goes up higher, so we're, you know, we're bringing that down lower. Is that accurate? You gotta be careful when you're doing these uh, correlations, you know, to make sure that your data is in line with what you want. And in this case, we really only need to have a difference of one. We don't need to go, if you go too far out, you're going to, again, uh, have less accurate data. So let's bring this back to a 1. Okay. If I did it with a 0, it would be the same thing as the graph I showed you earlier, the clean graph, which is not uh, exactly what we want. 
So let's do this again, watch. There we go. That's with a difference of one. And what we're gonna do next is we wanna do this ADF test, okay? So the ADF.test is a function where we're bringing in the plot of this, what we just created here based on the difference of this, and the alternative is stationary. So remember this, the, the dickinson fuller test? So let's do this. And there we go, I'm not, not Dickinson, Dicky fuller I'm sorry, test. And see this negative 10.801? What that means is we're even more accurate than we were before. Because before it was a negative 3.7, I believe. And so now we're at negative 10.801 and our lag order is seven again, okay? So by using that, we know that this is good. Now, what we wanna do is let's look at our ACF again, okay, and our PACF. Remember before we did it, we had this, because remember this is based off the moving average, okay? We had this, we had a bunch of points outside of it, right? So instead, we're now gonna use, see how that one uses count underscore MA, that's our moving average? Now we're gonna use D1, which is this guy right here that we just created right here based, and it's got the data with a difference of one in it. So what we're gonna do is, let's do this one. Okay. And look at that. Instead of having a whole ton of lines outside of it, we've got one main one, and we got two little ones. So if you look right here, you can see the one main one and the two little ones. The main one is probably, if you take that 15, that's probably right around seven. So that's our lag of seven. Now let's do this, because the PACF will back that up. Remember that includes the previous lags too. So let's do this one. Control and enter. And see, it starts at seven and then it goes off because it includes the previous lags, okay? So what we wanna do is we would wanna take that into account. And we're going to do that when we go down to build our arena, our arena model. But right now, that's what we want to stay at. We want to look at our autocorrelations. And we've done, we've built this uh, with a difference of one, the count D1. And you're going to see that when we do the arena model, we're going to use these factors in here. So that's what we're going to do next in the next video. But for this video, all we wanted to show you was the ACF, the PACF. And you can go read up on those and see what they are. And they show you how we work with the lag. And uh, what we're trying to do is get our numbers to be more accurate. So the, um, the, strong, the ADF, if it's more negative and stronger, as I showed you earlier, so it's negative 10 uh, something it was in this one. Let's bring that up here. Negative 10.801, that's what we want. And the difference level of one is sufficient because we can reject the null hypothesis. So that was where we did that earlier. And uh, that this um, becomes the D value down below, which we'll use in a minute, uh, or in the next video, when we build our ARIMA model. So an ARIMA has PDQ values, right? It has three values. And the difference right here is your middle one. That's your D or your difference or your the, the middle one. You have the P and the D and the Q. And we'll show you that in a minute. And it's very important so you have a highly accurate model. But right now, we just want to know that the difference is one and our lag up above, or that we've seen here, is seven, okay? So we have two of those values right now, basically. And we're gonna go into more on that when we actually build the ARIMA model in the next video, all right? So thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and uh, go back and watch the first two if you haven't watched them, the first two of this series. And then the next one, I'll have it posted here in just a little bit and you'll be able to go and actually build the model. And then we're gonna test the model and prove the model. And then we're gonna go do a little bit more beyond that. So it's really cool. This is a complete walkthrough, a complete data science, data analysis walkthrough on completing on a complete and highly accurate ARIMA model in R. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.